for those of you that don't know me, if you're a new guest, if we just haven't seen each other, because like Zach said, I'm always behind the scenes. My name is Cassandra McCallan. <laughs> Um, and first off, I just want to say thank you to Pastor Zach, uh, Miss Denise, the Hagen family, all student ministries for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Um, how many of you are thankful for leaders that are spirit led? Amen. Me too. So I just want to give you guys a little bit um, about me just for us to get to know each other a little bit before we get into the words. So I'm from California. I moved to Tulsa, Oklahoma for Rama Bible Training College in 2018. Any Rama grads in this place? Oh yeah, period. So um, I actually graduated from Rama School of World Missions in 2021. Yes. 2021 and ended up getting married and stayed here and now I'm pregnant. Just kidding, I'm not pregnant. Um, <laughs> but that would have been Josiah's first time finding out. Um, but anyways, so um, I stayed here, um, have been serving in Rama, Rama Youth, then JV, then Varsity, then Rama Youth. Um, since 2018, so this is my fifth year, and am loving every bit of it. So, um, yeah, are we ready to just have some combo? Yeah, yeah, we are. I'm so excited. So today, I just want to talk to you guys about the plan of God. Oh yeah, don't you want that on a shirt? Thank you to Josiah McAllen for making this. Um, but today we're going to talk about the plan of God. How many of you know that, that God has a plan for you? Yep. And then how many of you know that God has a plan for the world? Yeah. So we're going to talk about both of those today. Um, to give you a little bit of context, I'm just going to give you a quick summary. Um, in the beginning, we know that God created man. God created Adam and Eve. And when God created Adam... They walked together. They had fellowship. They had relationship. And then God gave Adam a boundary. God gave Adam a command to what? To not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He had everything in the garden. Um, everything was flourishing. God made trees come from the ground and all of this stuff. Um, but he couldn't have that one thing. And then, you know, the serpent came, deceived Eve. Eve gave some to Adam, and then Adam sinned, and there was separation now between us and the Father. So that separation um, is what started God's plan to bring us back to him. So that is God's plan for humanity. God's plan is for his people that he created, that he designed to have a relationship with. You know the song that we were just singing? We say, we want to walk with you. We want to talk with you. We want to hear you speak. We want to feel you breathe. That's what it was like in the garden. That was the original intention for our relationship to be so intimate and close with God. That's why we desire it so much. Because that's what's real to us. Our, the deep inside of us cries out to the deep inside of God because that's our home, right? That's, that's where we were designed and created to be. So um, the gap was made between man and, and God, and then there was this separation, this fellowship and relationship that they once had was no longer because of sin. And how many of you know that sin and God don't go together? So it wasn't that God was like, ugh, I don't like you anymore. It was, I actually can't do this. I actually can't be where there is sin. God is perfect. God is holy. God is righteous. And sin is the total opposite of that. So they can't, they can't be together. They can't mesh, you know. So then God put into place a plan for all of mankind to experience this gracious gift of sending who? Jesus, his one and only son, that while we were yet sinners, 
he would die for us, and we would, ex if we accepted him, believed in him, declared him as Lord in our lives, we would experience eternal life. And that is the bridge that brought us back to God. Does that make sense? So there was separation. There was fellowship first. Then there was separation. Then God came, or Jesus came, and bridge the gap between us and God. So that's where we're at right now. That's, that's what we get to partake of right now when we accept Jesus into our life. We're back in fellowship with the Father. We're back in relationship with him. We, we're back walking with him and talking with him. Um, back in the original position that God designed from the beginning. And so that's, that's God. God loves us. God cares about us so much that he would, he would do that for us. Um, but that's not what I want to talk to you about today. That's very, very important because that's the foundation for everything, that while we were yet sinners, he would send Jesus to die for us. But what I want to talk about today is God's personal plan for you, the part that you have to play in God's redemptive plan for the world. So the two plans go together. There's not God's redemptive plan for the world without me doing my part. And there's no I just exist to have fun and party, right? We, it's bigger than us. There's, our souls are going somewhere and that's what our whole life is about. It's about us getting back with the Father and then bringing people that are not back with the Father. So how many of you guys have ever played a game of sharks and minnows? Oh, yeah, my people know what this is, this game is about. I asked Josiah, and he's like, I don't know what that is. So sharks and minnows. Okay, who can explain it to me really quick? Uh-huh. That's, yep. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yep. E exactly. Yep. Yep. So I think that was, that was good. He, did any, no one heard him? So there's people on one side. So say this is the start, right? And then where the speaker is, is the finish. That's a really short game, but we're just going to say that that's what that is. So there's a start and a finish, and you have the minnows, the fish, have to get from one side to the other side. And then there's one person in the middle called a shark. And that shark touches people while they're running, and when if they're tagged, then they are out? No, they become a shark. And then their responsibility changes from running from one side to the other side, to tagging other people. So I liken this to our relationship with God and our, one of the thing, our, one of our responsibilities while here on earth. So we were once fish, we were once minnows, right? And then someone tagged us, whether it was a God encounter, whether it was someone ministering to us, whether it was in small groups, whether it was someone inviting you to church, some way someone tagged you and you were no longer a minnow, you became a shark. You came into fellowship with God. You came back into relationship with God. And now your responsibility is not to just stand there and be like, wow, these people run fast. Well, look at that guy get by. Your responsibility is to go out and tag people. Go out and bring those, those fish and make them sharks so they can go out and tag people. And then those fish can go out and tag people and tag people and tag people so that all of humanity is back in fellowship with God. Because that is God's whole plan for the earth. Everything that has been created, everything that we do is all about God. And so many times we like to make it about ourselves. And I am so guilty of that, guys. Like, so guilty. I'm like, mm, I don't want to talk to that person. And I don't really want to go there. And I don't really want to be nice. And I don't really want to 
you know, tell you whatever when we don't vibe. You know, I'm, it's just not what I want to do. And I didn't realize that I was just so prideful that I had made everything that was supposed to be about them, everything that was supposed to be about tagging them and bringing them back into fellowship with God, or even if they are already, everything that is about other people, I made about myself. And that stop, that prevents us, that delays us from being able to participate in God's plan of redemption. Is everyone still with me? Yes? So I want to um, go to this scripture really quick. Um, actually, before I go to a scripture, I want to define two words to you because that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about our purpose and our role um, because those are two different things. And um, let's put the definition of role up. The definition of role is the function assumed or part played by a person or thing in a particular situation. So this situation is God's redemptive plan. That's our point of view when we're using this word. Synonyms for role are capacity, responsibility, place, and part, right? Let's go to the next definition of purpose. The definition of purpose is the reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists, okay? And this is still in relationship to God's redemptive plan, but it's more so in relationship with us and God. So our purpose is to love God. Why we were created was for fellowship with God, relationship with God. But our role in God's redemptive plan is to love people right? So God created us to love him, and then in turn, we go and love people. And I want to stop here. Um, you may say, like, okay, awesome, give me a scripture. So Matt 22, Matt, Matt, Matthew 22, 36 through 40, um, <laughs> uh, let's read that in the NIV. We have Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? So the context of this, someone is going to Jesus and, like, trying to tell him, like, hey, like, you don't know what you're talking about. I know what I'm talking about because I know the law of Moses. Um, so you tell me, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So God, Jesus was basically telling them, like, everything that you're trying to use against me all actually sits on love. It's all about love, everything. I mean, God created us from love. God created us to love. God created us to be loved by him. Everything is about love. God's re when, Jesus sent, or when God sent Jesus to die on the cross, it was about love. When God asks you to go befriend someone, it's about love. When God tells you to stop playing a video game or don't go to the movies, it's about love. Everything is about love right? So I actually am going to stop here and I'm going to give you guys a quick testimony. So I was hanging out with my BFF, Juliana, and it was like the first time that we ever talked, right? So it wasn't like we knew each other. It wasn't um, like she knew all of my business. Like we were just hanging out and giving our life story, all the things. And then she told me she was like, you can just tell that you love people. And I was like, ah, girl, no, that is not true. Because, like, I'm going to be so for real with you. I can't say I do not, because now I do. I did not love people. That was never my forte. It was never something I was good at. And honestly, it was never something I wanted to do. Like, I said, you know what? I'm a shark right? I'm back in relationship with God. I'm having fun 
me and God are partying all the time, like I'm on tech team, I'm, you know, doing lights, we're at Summer Blitz, we're, we're doing all of these things, like I don't need a relationship with people, because how many of you are good at something? None of you guys are good at anything back there. You guys are good at something. You're good at something. You're good at something. Well, guess what? I think I'm good at everything. Okay? Every single thing that I ever do, anything that I put my hand to, I'm good at. Period. Like, no, no, nothing. You can't tell me anything. Like, absolutely, I'm good. I'm going to be good at it. Right? Absolutely. So, I said, why do I need people? What's the point of people? Like, I don't need you. I, I even told Josiah, why do I need you to fix my car? Or why do I need you to, why are, why are we married? Like, what is it for? Yeah, like, what, I don't need people, okay? And then Mika would tell me all the time, um, yeah, you do. God, in the beginning, not only said, let's have fellowship, but then he also said, it's not good for man to be alone, right? He said, relationship with me is great, but you still need people, right? Is that, is that not accurate? That's accurate. God said, we need people. We need relationship. We need fellowship. And I didn't get that. And it wasn't because I'm so great at everything that I do. It's because I'm going to be, can I, do you give me permission to be so transparent with you right now? Yes. It wasn't because I didn't need them. It was because I didn't love God. <gasps> what? How can I be on tech team, right? How can I be doing all of these crazy lights for you for summer blitz? Come on, somebody hype me up, okay? How, how can we, <laughs> how can we, like, you know, how can we be doing all of these things? All of I said, I am a shark, uh, right? I'm a shark. I'm not a minnow. I don't need God. So how can I be doing all of this stuff, but I don't love him? That doesn't make sense. And you know what it was? I did all of the things for God. I even prayed. I worshiped, but I didn't read the word. And the word prevented how deep, or the lack of reading the word prevented how deep I went with God. Because the word is God. The word is how God talks to me. God talks to me in my spirit, but that's how I learn about his character. Without the word, I learn about his character through my experiences. Right? With the word, I learn about God's character by who he says he is. So God could be telling, God, I could be viewing God as a bad God. God didn't give me money. I, I paid my tithes. He, he told me to be generous, and I'm generous. And look, I still have $2 in my bank account. And I'm still going to go get a large fry. Right? That's not a good God. That's not a generous, abundant, faithful, you sow, you reap God. But that's because I'm viewing God based off of my experiences and not based on who he is, who he says he is. Because God's character, I'm telling you right now, this is going to save you a whole lot of everything in your life. We do not view God's character by what he does. I think I said that right. We've we do not view God's character by what we do, by what he does. We view what he does through his character. So God isn't good because he does good. Everything God does is good because he is good. Does that make sense? So if God's asking you, hey, don't be friends with them anymore, that's good. Even though to you it doesn't look that way. If God's telling you don't be in a relationship right now, that's good. Even though it doesn't look that way. If it ends in heartbreak, if it, you know, maybe it makes you feel all of the things that we don't classify as good, it's good because it's God. Right? I want to go to this scripture 
um, if I have the reference. I don't think I have the reference, but there's a scripture in the Bible, and you, you look this up so that you have the reference, where there's a scripture where another person goes up to Jesus and he says, what is good? What is, what is the, like, the best good thing someone can do? And Jesus says, why are you asking me what is, what is good? There is only one who is good. So it's not the things that we do. It's simply his character. We know God. We love God. And because we know God and we love God, we love people. They all go together. Do you see where I'm going with this? So I didn't need people slash love people because I didn't love God. And I didn't love God because I didn't know God. And I didn't know God because I wasn't reading my word. So when I read my word, when I'm in fellowship with him, then I know God. I know God's character. I know the way that he views me. I know the way that he loves me. I know the way that he um, really just who he is. And because I know that, I love him. How can you not love God? If you, don't know, if you don't love God, it's because you don't know him. It's not because he's not lovable. So if you're having trouble with loving God, with obeying God, check your relationship with him. Someone once told me a couple of um, months ago when I was struggling, when I was the in-between, like, I don't need people, I don't love people, whatever, into, oh, wait, I see that God asks me to love people and have relationship with people. And someone told me, many times our relationships, the quality of our relationships are in direct proportion to the quality of our relationship with God. So if we are super close with God, if we are, you know, BFFs with him, we talk with him every day, we walk with him, we hear him speak, we feel him breathe, we all of these things, then our relationship with people is going to look the same way. And let me tell you, because this is something that I realized when preparing this, it's not because suddenly God is going to bring you friends, and it's not because suddenly people are going to like you, and suddenly you're going to be popular, and suddenly your reality is going to change. That's not why you, like, how your, how your friendships look like your relationship with God. That's not what happens. When you are in close relationship with God, when you are in close fellowship with God, you cannot help but to change yourself. You cannot help but love people because love is on the inside of you. And when you love people, your relationships change. Because it's not based on whether they love you or not. Like I said, it's not based on if you, if you like, vibe, if you mesh, if you, you know, all of the things that, like, may turn you off from someone. You're like, I don't like how they dress or I don't like how they talk. I don't like who they hang out with. I don't like the way that they look at me. That doesn't matter because you love them. And you love them because you love God. Right? So that is our purpose. That is... Can you put the definition back up? That is the reason for which something is done or created. That loving God is the reason we were created. And then put the definition of roll up. Loving people is our place and our part in God's redemptive plan. Um, but then there's another thing. And I told you that I was going to talk to you about our individual places, our individual um, purpose, call, um, what God has put on the inside of us in addition to his whole plan for um, humanity. And I actually cannot tell you what that is. That's something that is going to be confirmed. That's, that's something that can be confirmed by people, but it's something that God speaks to you. So if someone is telling you, like, you're going to be a pastor, and it's not something that God has already spoken to you, just put it on the shelf. If God wants you to be in ministry, you're going to know. If God wants you to be a real estate agent, you're going to know. And how do we know this? And this is the next, this is the next point. 
listen to God's voice and obey it. So number one, we love, peop- we love God, we love people, and then number two, we listen to his voice and we obey it. And these two, loving, loving God, loving people, and obeying his commands are very, very closely knit. We cannot obey God's commands if we do not, number one, love people, because that's, we just read God's greatest command to love God and love people, right? So we're missing a really big, big part. But another thing is when we obey God, we are doing exactly what we're supposed to do. When we obey God, whether or not it looks like what you thought it would look like, whether or not um, you're where you want to be, you are pleasing to God. And when we love God, we obey his commands. So let's look at 1 John 5, 3 through 4. Um, It says, For the true love of God is this, that we do his commands, keep his ordinances, and are mindful of his precepts and teaching. And these orders of his are not irksome, parentheses, burdensome, oppressive, or grievous. And I think this is such a beautiful translation of this because it tells us that we, number one, obey God when we love him. And then number two, what he asks us to do is not burdensome. What he asks us to do is not hard. What he asks us to do is not um, oppressive. It's good and it's easy. Because when God asks you to do something, you know, number one, that it's good because that's his character. And then you know, number two, that you have the ability to do it because he gives you his grace, which is what? his supernatural power and ability to do what he's asking you to do. So you not only always know what to do based on your relationship with him, but you always have the ability to do it because of his character and because of his grace. Right? So maybe God's asking you to fast video games. Maybe God's telling you not to go to a party. Maybe God's telling you not to hang out with a friend or with a boyfriend or with your friend's boyfriend or your boyfriend's friend or whatever. Maybe God is telling you not to do this, right? Don't disregard what God is speaking to you because he's not telling it to someone else. And why do I say that? Because we as minnows or sharks have a tendency to look at what God is asking us to do. If God says, what's your name? Josh. If God says, Josh, I want you, say you're, say you're 22. (laughs) Josh is 22, guys, okay? So when Josh is 22, God says, I want you to not accept the job that offers you a bunch of money. I want you to work at Rama where you will like be <laughs> be in ministry and whatever, right? So that's what God says. And you're like why would I turn down like $100,000? Let's just say this job's $100,000, okay? Why would I turn down $100,000 to go work at a place that I may not get $100,000, right? (laughs) Why would I do that? Because that's what God's asking you to do, period. Does it make sense? No. To our brain? No. Is it something you want to do? Maybe not. But that's what God said to do. That's what we do, period. There's no, well, explain it to me. There's no, well, this or well, that. It's God is asking me to obey him, and I do it point blank because I love him. And we love him because we know him, and we know him because we're in fellowship with him, which was what the original intention for humanity. So why am I telling you this? Why did I listen for however many minutes to someone that's always behind the scenes to hear about sharks and minnows 
What's the point? The point is that I am 23 years old, so I do not have a lot of life experience to give you, okay? I can tell you what it's like to be married for two years to an Australian, right? I could tell you what it's like to be cute, but, <laughs> like, that's it, right? <laughs> I can't really tell you anything else because I'm 23 years old, okay? But you know what I know? The one thing that I am confident in is that God is good, and that's it. That's the whole point. That's the whole everything. God is good, and something that I have learned is that when I obey God, my life is good. And good is subjective, right? People are like, well, good means I have a lot of money. Well, good means I have a lot of friends. Well, good means my family's healthy. Well, good means this. Well, good means that. You know what the Bible says? Good is God. So if my life, if I am obeying God, then it does not matter what my reality looks like. It is good. And God is faithful. And the way that God brought the Israelites out of slavery into the promised land after years and years and years of their disobedience, he brought them into the promised land because that was a promise he gave to their father, Abraham. So God is faithful. And whether we are in Egypt, parentheses, slavery, or the wilderness, parentheses, in the waiting, God is faithful. If we are in the promised land, parentheses, God's fulfillment of what he's told us, God is faithful. Period. <laughs> right? And I don't say that in a, like, way. I say that in a literally, guys, God is good and God is faithful. And if you take anything out of this, if you're like, actually, I didn't get anything. Just take that God is good and God is faithful. And when you are in fellowship with God, you hear his voice and you always know what to do and you always know where to go because God's not hiding from us. His original intention was for us to be in relationship with him. So that's what we're going to, to have when we Go from being a minnow to being a shark. The last thing, very, 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 very last thing that I have for you is if you're taking notes, if you have your phone or anything, I want you to write down these scriptures. There's five scriptures. There's obviously a ton more that you can have, that you have access to by reading the word. But I picked these scriptures for you specifically so that when you are in your wilderness, when you are in your in-between, when you are in a reality where it looks like God isn't good and it looks like you have no direction and it looks like maybe you're reverting back to a minnow, you go to these scriptures and you say, I know God. And because I know God, I know his voice. And because I know his voice, I know what commands he's giving me. And because I love God, I obey his commands. And then my life is good because I am in the will of God. Right? So let's write down John 10, 27. That says that we hear God's voice. Then let's write down 1 John 2, 20. That says we have an unction from the Holy One and know all things. Then Psalms 119, 105. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Romans 8, 14. Those that are led by God are the children of God. John 10, 14. I am a good shepherd, my sheep know my voice. So to summarize everything that I said, God has a plan of redemption for the entire world, and that's to bring humanity back into relationship with him. 
And then God has an individual unique plan for me that I have access to by obeying him. And I can obey God because I know his voice. And I know God's voice because I'm in relationship with him. And because I'm in relationship with him, I love him. And because I love God, I love people. So I want to encourage you today, maybe just one of you, two of you, three of you, five of you, or maybe it does not hit you until you are 23. But I want to encourage you today to keep on obeying God. Listen to his voice. Obey his commands. Don't look to the right or to the left. Follow after him, not your friends. God could be saying something that's unique to you that he's not telling to someone else because you have a unique plan. So just love God. Be in fellowship with him. Read your word. I'm telling you, the word is pretty legit. I didn't read the word. And when I started to read the word, my life started to change. And it wasn't because suddenly everything in life was good. It was because I had the revelation that he was. So can everyone do me a favor and stop talking to each other <laughs> and look at me and say or repeat after me, I know God, and because I know God, I love God, and because I love God, I obey his commands, and I love people. That's it. That's the whole thing. So can I pray for you guys before Pastor Zach takes this? Yes, I can. Thank you. Father, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you for the revelation of your word and your character. And I ask for your word to not return back to heaven until it succeeded in what you've sent it to do. So whether it's today, tomorrow, or in 23 years, I ask for you to reveal yourself to them the way that you did to me. Put people across their path that challenge them. Challenge them to read the word. Challenge them to go deeper in relationship with you. And then also protect them and guide their steps that they would always be covered by your will. We know that you are a faithful God. In the same way you brought the Israelites into the promised land, you will fulfill your covenant promises to each and every one of us. God, I ask for you to reveal your unique and individual plan to these students so that they would know what to do, how to obey you, and what not to do. They are always in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, surrounded by the right people. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give it up for Cassandra one big time again. Now, I know there's some people who want to get out of here, but I just feel impressed on something in my heart. And I want everyone to bow their head and close your eyes for a moment. What Cassandra was talking about was very practical. Very practical. One thing I want you to understand is that in order to love God, it actually takes receiving his love to love him. What if I told you tonight, you can actually never love God without his love to help you love him. 
And what was impressed on my heart while she was talking was that there were so many of you students that are here tonight that you have not experienced the love of God for your life. Maybe I'm talking to one. And maybe the rest of us have encountered the love of God, but maybe you're in here tonight. And for those of you who have, if it's just for the one, we're going to take this moment. And if you have never experienced the love of God, and what you say, what, what, what is the love of God? How do I know it's the love of God? I can tell you it's the love of God. When you recognize immediately the things that are in your life that are prohibiting you from intimacy, from accepting yourself, from loving others, but in the moment when you receive the love of God, you immediately are aware of where you're not, but where you should be. And some of you right now, there's someone in here right now, you're coming into recognition of the things that in your life that should not be there. What is that? What's causing these things? Is it shame? No. That's the love of God. God loves you so much that he wants to show you what is keeping you from getting close to him. So right now as I'm talking, I just want you to let that love speak to you. Let love show you what's in the way. And as an act of faith and as an act of obedience, I want you to picture those things that love is showing you, that God is showing you. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's unforgiveness, bitterness towards somebody. Maybe it's self-hatred, thoughts that you're thinking toward yourself that you're not enough, that you're not good enough, that you're not smart enough. Maybe it's just thoughts, maybe it's addictions, maybe it's unforgiveness, but I want you to take that thing that love is revealing to you right now. And I want you to cast it into the arms and the hands of the God who can take care of it. I want to assure someone in here tonight that the things that you are wrestling with right now, you do not have to overcome yourself. God is a loving God, and His love is here to take care of the things that you've been struggling with. And as you hand it to Him, you're going to feel a weight lift. You're going to feel a peace come over your mind, a peace and a love that comes inside of your heart. I believe right now as I'm talking, there's someone in here that the love of God is being shed abroad in your heart right now. You feel that warmth inside of your heart. You're feeling that acceptance right now. And you know what? If, if that's not you, then let's just have faith for the one that's receiving that right now. There's someone in here that needs to know that they are accepted. There's someone in here that needs to know that they are loved. That even though they've been rejected by people in this life, and though they might not fit in at school, and though they might have been left by a father or a mother, that God is here to meet specifically with them, to tell them. And to tell you that you're seen, that you're loved, and that you're in good hands of a good God. So Heavenly Father, right now, I pray that your love would sink deep. It would sink deep inside of the heart. And it would overflow into the soul, into the mind, into the body of every single individual in this room. Lord, that even when they lay down tonight, that your love would overwhelm them. They'd be baptized, overwhelmed, and submerged in your love. And they would know that you have a plan for their life. And it's good. It's good, 
It's great. And it was specifically carved out for you. Nobody else, nobody else can do that. Only you. And God wants to show you that plan. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we love you and we thank you. We thank you for what Cassandra said. We thank you that you used her, her life, her testimony to show these teens what it's like to fall back in love with you and when we fall back in love with you to fall in love with people all over again that they may have what she now has and they may have what we have in you. God, we love you and we thank you and it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said... Thank you Amen. so much for watching. We hope that this message blessed you. Man, if it encouraged you, make sure you hit like and subscribe to our channel for future content. We'll see you next time.